Family and friends, the hour shall come and now is when the true worshiper will worship God in spirit and in truth. Join me now as we worship together. Good morning. We are so glad to have you with us in worship this morning, braving the weather. And if you decided that maybe it was safer to stay at home, we're glad to have you with us online as well. Happy Mother's Day to you. Whether you're a mother by birth or by choice, we are so glad to celebrate all of the women in the congregation today. Mike Petty, it's good to see you back in worship again. So wonderful. Where is our God box? Oh, God box. God box this morning, which if you're new to our church, God box is your loose dollar bills, change, whatever you want to put in there. The children usually come around during the first hymn to uh, pick it up for you if you want, or you can come up and bring it and put it in the God box. It is uh, this morning going to the Santa Maria Hostel, which is a, an in-house facility for women with addiction issues that allows them to keep their children with them. It's one of the very few that will allow you to keep your child with you while you are going through um, recovery steps. And it is actually headed up by one of our members here, um, Nadine Scamp. So we're going to be contributing to that mission this morning with our God Box. And now will you stand and join us as we worship?
invite you, oh, that seems loud. I invite you to remain standing for our call to worship. We've come this morning to worship God. Who knows us even better than we know ourselves. Who's, and whose love for us never ceases. Amen. And now please join me as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to Klein United Methodist Church. Please use your phone to sign in with the QR code on the back of the pew. Or if you're watching on online, please use the link on the page to let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, we encourage you to visit our Welcome Center located just outside the sanctuary doors to find out more about our missions and ministries here at Klein. May is Safe Sanctuary Certification Month. All adult volunteers for children, youth, and elderly adults need to complete the annual certification. Have you started yet? Go to kleinumc.org slash safe sanctuary to get started. Fifth grade clap out will be next Sunday, May 21st at 10 a.m. Line up in the main building lobbies upstairs or downstairs to help us celebrate our fifth graders as they join student ministries. We are about to blast off into VBS. Help us get ready at VBS Prep Day, 12 to 3 p.m. next Sunday, May 21st. Lunch will be served and child care will be available for children four and under. We have a job for everyone, including our elementary age students. Make sure to sign up for your job at kleinumc.org. The VBS volunteer meeting for all adult and youth volunteers will be June 4th at 12 p.m. in room 308. Please make sure to attend for important information. A Zoom link will also be emailed out if you're unable to attend in person. Musical Arts Camp is coming this summer, July 24th through the 28th. Campers learn choreography, play instruments, and more. The performance of their full musical will be on Sunday, July 30th. For more information and to sign up, please visit the website. Finally, save the date for the Youth Choir presentation on Sunday, June 4th at 10 a.m. in the Sanctuary. They will be performing their show before they head out on tour later that day. Have a great week and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Do you know who's really good at mothering? God. The definition of mothering is to bring up with care and affection. We are God's children, and He loves us more than we could ever imagine. Psalm 139 describe, describes God's mothering so well. Suppose I were to rise with the sun in the east. Suppose I traveled to the west where it sinks into the ocean. Your hand will always be there to guide me. Your right hand would still be holding me close. Suppose I were to say, I'm sure the darkness will hide me. The light around me will become as dark as night. Even that darkness would not be dark to you. The night would shine like the day because darkness is like light to you. No matter where we are, God is with us, guiding us. No matter how dark or bad a time in our life might be, God is with us, bringing light to us. 
God is committed to taking care of us no matter what. So no matter where you go, what you're dealing with, how you're feeling, remember, he is right there with you. He loves you, cares for you, and will continue to mother you each and every day. See you next week. Amen. I tell you, she nails it most times, just right on the head. Let me offer my own Happy Mother's Day to all of you present and to all of you that are virtual. As we move into our prayer time, I, I want to invite you to assume with me a thankful spirit, a thankful attitude. And I know that that can sometimes be difficult because circumstances will sometimes try to move us into a different direction. But, I mean, the message today is that we are never alone, we are never on our own, and we have the best mother we could ever have. The first mother, Mother God. And I don't know about you, but there are qualities around mothering that I've just kind of always enjoyed, Joe, you know? I I've kind of always enjoyed the mothering that I got from grandparents and from aunts and from mom herself and just from women in the community. And I'm sure you have similar experiences. Can you say thank you, Lord? Say thank of our difficulties we are reminded that your word tells us that in this world we will have trouble but we're also reminded that the rest of the story says that we could be of good cheer for you have overcome the world and so God today we come before your presence in the midst of this worship experience simply to say thank you thank you for giving us mothers. Thank you for making so many mothers. Not just by birth, but by relationships of choice. Thank you for the way mothers love and for the way they give and for the way they continue to nurture all of your creation. God, we thank you that even for those of us whose moms are no longer with us, we have memories of the good things and of the blessings of their presence. So thank you, God, 
We thank you now for this church. We thank you for this faith community. We thank you for this safe place that we can come and just pour out our hearts and share our feelings and our thoughts and know that you are going to be in the midst of it all. God, we thank you for being our refuge and our strength. We thank you for being that place we run to in the time of sorrow. And so God, we recognize today that while there are a number of us who will be celebrating, there will be a number of us who are still grieving. The loss of a mother never gets old. <laughs> and so sometimes today we may find ourselves a little weepy, but I know you understand that. God, we thank you for encouraging our hearts even in the midst of it all. And God, right now, thank you for being the doctor that just keeps on healing. Thank you for being the comforter that keeps on comforting. Thank you for being that presence that brings us so much peace. Do it again today and every day. And we are comforted even now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. As we say together now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. And lead us not, but deliver us. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank God. Please stand as we worship together.
You may be seated. And I invite our ushers to come forward as we prepare to give our tithes and our offerings. As we begin this busy summer season, your gifts make all the difference in the ministries that we are able to do in this community. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we come before you now and as a spiritual practice, as an offering of ourselves, we give a portion of the gifts we've already received back to you. We give them in the expectation that you will bless them and that they will make a difference in this world. But we also give in the expectation that through the giving, you will change us as well. Make us more like you in everything we do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
<clears throat> Today's scripture comes from Psalm 139, verses 9 through 12. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. So Mother's Day, it's a great day, but it's a day I have a complicated relationship with. I am very fortunate to have been raised by a wonderful mother, dependable mother, a loving mother. But I recognize that not everyone has had that gift. Mike Petty has. He told me this morning that his mom was a saint. I'm also lucky to still have my mom with me. I'm very aware that not everybody does. I also, as you know, have three kids and feel incredibly fortunate that I have three children. But I also remember the years of Mother's Days during which my husband and I were struggling with infertility and how that felt. And I see you out there if you're in that situation. And I know what that feels like. I also remember the weird things people have said to me as an adoptive mother about real moms and adoptive moms. I see you too, moms who have adopted children. And I have friends and loved ones who no longer have their children, who were mothers but have lost their children. And I can only imagine the difficulty that a day like Mother's Day brings to people in that situation. And I also think about all of the people who don't fit in that box that society gives us of gender and familial relationship and age and all of that that goes into what we consider a typical image of a mother to be. Mother's Day can be complicated. So as I was choosing scripture today, or for today, I didn't choose it this morning. That would be impressive if I had. <laughs> I was looking for scripture that talked about the mothering in a way that avoided the image that society often puts around the idea of mother and instead focused on the behavior, the way of mothering that we're talking about, because the reality is, is mothering in our lives happens from all sorts of people. Men, women, people older than us, younger than us, people who are related to us and who aren't related to us by blood, even by marriage or family relationship. So I chose this psalm because it helped me focus on what it means to be a mother instead of what it looks like, what a mother looks like. Because that's what's really matter, what really matters to us. It's not the way the people look who've mothered us, but it's the way they've lifted us up, they've touched us, and shaped our lives in significant ways. So I picked this scripture, and then I pulled out the dictionary. That's not true, kind of like what you said last week. I Googled the dictionary. I don't even know if I own a dictionary anymore. So I looked up the word mother as a verb. And as Megan said, I found things like to protect, to tend, to nurture, to care for, to cherish, and to love. And those are big words, words that require attention and dedication and commitment and intentionality. They require us to be consistent. Protecting someone, nurturing someone, even for a moment requires us to choose to do it, requires that it be a choice. The way we orient ourselves and our relationship with others, the way we communicate with others and give of ourselves to others is important. We protect, we nurture, we tend, we care, we love. It's a way of being. And frankly, we get this, we learn this best 
from God. So the psalmist opens with these lines and says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know, when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts even from far away. So this opening struck me, and as I looked through the commentaries, it struck other people as well. Apparently, this psalm scares the heck out of some people. This idea that God knows what we're thinking and feeling, knows what we're going to do before we do it, knows our deepest, darkest secrets and our craziest desires can be scary. I mean, we all long to be known. I think we do. But just as much as we long to be known, I know that many of us work really hard on creating a very public facade, something that makes us feel safe in the world, that makes us look competent and independent, confident, an identity that's safe to show the world. And when we read about our God and that our God sees right through all of that, that can be scary for some folks. And I thought, really? Scary? And then I thought, well, I guess it's scary depending on how you feel about God and what you think God's motives are with us, who God really is. In lines 8 and 10, that Gene Skirm read for me today, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute too, because that was a coup right there. That was getting Gene Skirm to read. That was a big deal. (laughs) If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. In fact, this psalm is often titled the inescapable God. Inescapable can be scary. And the reason that it can be scary is I think that there are many voices in our world, a lot of them theological voices, frankly, that don't do us a lot of favors. That indicate that God is perhaps out to get us, to shine a light on all of our flaws and all of our weaknesses. And if that were true... An inescapable God would be very terrifying. But if you believe that God is intent on loving you, on nurturing you, in covering you with a balm of care and kindness, even when God knows your deepest, darkest, truest self, well, then you might find comfort in this psalm. I know I do. If you believe in Jesus as God among us, Incarnate divinity. Consider what that tells us about who God is. God doesn't come as a man in the flesh so that God can know what we are like. God is our creator. God already knows what we're like. Knows our deepest, darkest, as I said. God knows. God knew. And listen, that tells us right there, just even that, tells us a lot. That God knowing us as well as God did, still chose to come and be among us in a vulnerable, human, mortal body. That tells us that God came in full sacrifice, risking everything, and knowing that the risk wasn't just a risk. It was real. That's right. This is a God who's inescapably is infinitely less frightening when seen through the lens of Jesus. If God knows us at our best and our worst, in light and dark, and is still willing to go to the farthest limits of what it means to be human, to suffer, to experience abandonment, to die. I mean, we are just barely through Easter, y'all. We've just talked about this. This is a God whose inescapability is something to celebrate. If God knows us this well, God must love us an awful lot to come and give himself the way he did. And yet, 
oftentimes we have an impulse to hide from God, to run from God, to not want God to see who we really are. And the psalmist experiences that too. In verses 11 and 12, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and night wraps itself around me. The psalmist also knows that even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. How often have you felt that urge to hide in shame or fear? But I encourage you when you do to think about the words we say. We said it last week. We say it every first Sunday. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And think about that angel outside of the empty tomb telling the women to go tell the disciples those disciples who at that moment were hiding behind locked doors in a room after they had abandoned Jesus, after Peter had denied him three times. The message to them isn't, I saw what you did, you're in trouble. The message isn't, I know you, you better be scared. The message is, I know what you did. I know every part of you, and I want you to come to me in Galilee. I've gone there. I'm waiting for you. Join me. This is the message. This is the knowledge we have of our God who showed up so that we would know that about God. I want you still. My love has no limits. I know you're a mess. Come on anyway. So consider this psalm as a way of understanding the way God loves us, the way God mothers us inescapably and unconditionally. Consider the people in your life who have loved you in this way. The people who have been steadfast, whose care and concern and love you never doubt. For some of us, it's our mom. For others of us, it's our dad. For some, it's an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a friend, a mentor. I sat and thought about what that meant and the way people have shown up for me in my life. And in fact, when I first started working on this sermon, when I first chose Psalm 139, Allison said, do you have any preferences? Who do you want to read scripture? Because sometimes we'll say, oh yeah, ask so-and-so or ask so-and-so. And I said, I want Jean Skirm to read scripture for me. I hope she is listening. She is out of town and I hope she is listening. Because Jean Skirm is one of those people who has always shown up for me. She's not my mom. She has no relationship to me. I haven't even known her all that long in the grand scheme of things, I guess. But she texts me words of encouragement. She texts me words of praise. She has a book that she carries around in which she writes down prayers and people she needs to keep in her prayers. And she does that for me and for many people in this room. Yep. Not just me. (laughs) But she is one of many people in my life who loves me, who mothers me in that way. I mean, I've been here a long time, and the list is long. Many of you know Dick Brown. Many of you don't. But if ever there was a man who mothered me, it was Dick Brown. (laughs) Lynn, you're another one of my mothers. Mm, She is. Right there in that corner on the front row mm -hmm, is someone who mothers me every week by reminding me that I need to take care of myself. Yep. (laughs) Our mothers are sometimes our moms. But our mothers come in many shapes, many sizes, many forms, many ages, many genders, all of it. Don't limit your appreciation on this day. I mean, celebrate your mom. I'm not saying don't celebrate them. I'm going to get emails about this. I am not saying don't celebrate your mom. (laughs) Celebrate your mom. But also celebrate the people in your life who have mothered you regardless of their relationship to you. Notice the way people have shown up for you in your life. And spend time thanking God for the way that God has shown up and mothered you in your life. Because I'll tell you what, God has mothered you first and God will mother you last. 
always and inescapably. And more than that, on this day, I want you to go out in gratitude and celebration of the people who have mothered you. But also learn from the example that Christ has set for us, the example that God gave us in Christ, the example that the people in your lives who have loved you best have given you. We aren't called just to receive love, right? We're called also to give it. So whether you're a mom by the strict definition that the dictionary has, or whether you're mothering people in your life right now, consider the impulse to be frightened by this psalm. To be scared by the idea that someone who knows you inside and out is always there, always present, is inescapable. You don't want to be a scary presence in somebody's life. And a mother or a person who's mothering but is going out to shine lights on your flaws and punish you when you've made bad choices and judge you in ways that make you feel uncomfortable or ashamed, that is scary. And God shows us, Jesus shows us, that is not the way to love. That is not the way to mother. Marshall told us last week, and we say this over and over again because it's important and because there are other voices out there that are going to tell you that this is not who God is, that God is about punishment. God is not. God is about showing up, knowing that we're a mess, loving us anyway, showing us a better way, and sticking to that way, demanding to be loving and kind and generous even when it costs us. It costs Jesus significantly. And yet the message never changes. Love, love, love. You're a mess. You denied me three times. Come on, let's go. I want you with me. As I said, Marshall said it last week. Jesus came to redeem, not to condemn. Meet me in Galilee. Tell Peter too. God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Not God smite them, they messed up. Take comfort in that. Learn from that. We have a God who mothers us well. We have a Savior who has mothered us well, extending to us love and protection in a way that we can never escape. And who would want to? So show up for those in your life the way Christ showed up for us. Love unconditionally and love well. Mother people in their best moments and their worst. And let them know that you are safe and loving presence. A presence of support and kindness and encouragement. No matter what. That's the model of mothering that we've been given by our God. So go out this week and be grateful for the ways in which you've been mothered and consider the ways that you might better mother those around you. Please pray with me. God, we are so grateful for those in our lives who have mothered us, those who show up, who cover us in grace and care and keep showing up. God, remind us to notice that kind of love, to express gratitude for it, and to learn from it. And God, let us never forget that you mothered us before anyone else, and you will mother us after everyone else has left. God, inspire us with just a spark of that kind of love, because if we're inspired and if we act, we can change the world and make it look just a little bit more like your kingdom. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for our closing
than I thought. Mm. I am grateful for the ways that this congregation mothers this community and mothers one another. I am grateful for the example that we receive that teaches us how to do that. And that's the example given to us by God through Jesus. Go out this week remembering that, celebrating those who mother you, and learning how to mother better, infinitely, always, inescapably, those around you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.